CBS Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. Sunny and warm in San Diego, Qualcomm Stadium. The same, the Miami Dolphins, 0-2 against the Chargers, 1-1. And, and this game brought to you in high definition on CBS. Temperature on the field, 86 degrees. Clear skies. And before kickoff, moments ago, Joey Porter of the Dolphins showing about the possible health reform. <laughs> uh, with Marcus McNeil of the Chargers. If we have a feeling that both teams needing a win today, we're going to see some heated action. Chargers won the toss, elected to receive. Dan Carpenter to kick it off for Miami. And Darren Sproles, who has been brilliant the first two weeks, leads the NFL. Kickoff return yardage with 33-yard average. Takes it at the 14. Skips his way out across the 25 to the 30 and tackled there by Cameron Wake. Phillip Rivers off his career best, 436 yards passing in last week's loss to Baltimore. Look for Rivers and his core of tall targets to go deep again today. One thing they're going to focus on today is trying to get a touchdown, their first drive of the game. Something they haven't done for a long, long time. Also, troubles in the red zone last week against Baltimore. Too many field goals, no touchdowns. Five times inside the red zone and no touchdowns. Fullback Hester in motion. And Sproles starting at tailback. LaDainian Tomlinson again is on the sidelines with an injury. Randy Starks made that tackle. Jason Ferguson with the stop. And those of you who watched that high-scoring affair, Jacksonville and Houston, welcome to San Diego. Dick Enberg and Dan Fouts. Jaguars with their first win of the year and the first win for a Florida team. Three Floridians NFL representatives starting 0-2, including this Miami team off a very difficult loss on Monday night and on a short week coming out to San Diego. Second and 10, Rivers first throw to Sproles. He had worked against Baltimore, but gets only four against the Dolphin defense. First possession of the game. With two starting offensive linemen out, the Chargers look to Pro Bowl left guard Chris Dielman to ignite some run offense. LT, as we said, on the sideline, so diminutive. Darren Sproles carrying the load, leading the NFL in total yardage and kickoff return yardage. He's the shortest man in the league, but playing big for San Diego. Only 5-6 is Sproles. Stays in the game on third and long. Rivers underneath the gates the tight end struggling to the first down marker and he makes it on the second effort in the grasp of Tyrone Culver. Miami's defense will count on 13 year nose tackle Jason Ferguson to test the Chargers revamped offensive line and after a year away in Washington the league's leading active sack master Jason Taylor's back. Taylor 42 career force fumbles and 10 defensive touchdowns on the back line safety Jeremiah Bell will try to shut down San Diego's Antonio Gates Quite a three week stretch for Bell and Miami Tony Gonzalez Dallas Clark and now Gates tight ends screen it to Nane Nane to the midfield stripe and out of bounds inside the 45 of Miami first down. Aiken Adell trailing the play makes the tackle. Well, the play to Gates really got the Chargers on rhythm now on first down and 10. They can go play action, throw the screen, really creative type of play, throwing it back to Nane. Gets two blockers out in front, another first down, and the ball all the way into Dolphin territory. This is a good start, last two plays for San Diego after a shaky first two. Nane. In his third year out of Boise State, being used more and more by Norv Turner. First down, 44 of Miami. Sproles into the teeth of that Miami defense. Not much there. Kendall Langford out of Hampton, his second year, 295 pounder in that uh, defensive tackle. 
Chargers going with an unbalanced line. Right tackle Jerome Clary went over to the left side. Then the Chargers trying to come back to the weak side with Sproles. But you, that's the problem with Sproles. At his size, he's not going to break any tackles inside. He'll make you miss on the perimeter. But the Chargers go up inside the tackles. They're going to have trouble getting yards with Sproles. And they're working with two men, Scott Murchowski at center and Brandon Dombrowski at right guard for the injured uh, Nick Hardwick and Luis Vasquez. It scrolls again, twisted down after short yardage, shy of the 40-yard line, bringing up third down and six. Channing Crowder with a tackle is dad, Randy Crowder, drafted himself by the Miami Dolphins back in 1974. We go back to the last third down situation where Gates broke the tackle of two Dolphins. He was short of the first down with a catch, but powered his way for the first down. They spread it out, and Rivers in the shotgun with Sproles at his side. Here comes the blitz. Rivers protected well, throws incomplete to Gates. Good defense from Will Allen, the veteran corner, and Tyrone Culver. It was Culver who reached in and ripped it away. And the Dolphins came with that blitz right up the middle that gave the Chargers so much problem last week against Baltimore. That was just outstanding coverage by Culver as he had the right hand on the ball before it could get all the way into Gates. So the string of utility on the opening drive not scoring a touchdown continues for San Diego and Cyphers will try to punch one down inside the 10 yard line. That's Kasem Osgood down to cover and it rolls dead just inside the five. So Cyphers pins Miami deep. We'll see the Dolphins and Chad Pennington and their offense when we return. Dolphins come to San Diego 0-2 just as they started losing their first two games a year ago and that's when they instituted the Wildcat offense. They're in the basic set and Pennington throwing from his own end zone and he's going deep for Ted Ginn and just misses him at midfield. So they isolate Ginn on Jammer and he had a step on the corner of the Chargers. Who said Chad Pennington can't throw the ball long? He threw this ball about 60 yards in the air. Unfortunately, he needed to throw it 57 yards in the air. That might have been a 95-yard touchdown play. Just too far for Ted Ginn. So second down from the five-yard line. That's Ronnie Brown, who's led the Dolphins in rushing previous uh, four years and leading again this year. Fasano and Hanos, two tight ends in this set. And here's Brown. Picks his way up the middle for two or three. And lots of action around the NFL early. Here's the result. Let's go to JB. Dick, the legend that is Brett Favre. Vikings down by four. 12 seconds left in regulation. Brett Favre under pressure. The gunslinger hit as soon as he lets it go. Hooks up with Greg Lewis at the back of the end zone. He dots the eye with that second foot inbounds. Minnesota comes away 27-24 victors. 40-second career comeback by Favre. Dick. And Dan. <laughs> oh my, Brett Favre at it again. Pulls out uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. Final seconds of that one. Third down and long for Pennington. Plenty of time. Throws underneath, complete to Bess. And he's got a first down across the 20 yard line. Devon Bess, his 11th catch of the year. Free agent pick a year ago out of Hawaii and was one of the top rookie receivers in the entire NFL last year. And it's called pocket presence by Chad Pennington. Watch as he just slides in the pocket to an open area, finds a cutting receiver right over the middle in Bess and picks up a huge first down to get him out of his own end zone throwing the ball. One of the nightmare situations on the road for a quarterback, huh? Well, especially with the crowd in full throat, the closed end of the field. Room to breathe now for Pennington in the offense. Uh, draw play to Brown. He's got big run room to run. He's out across the 30, and Eric Weddle got him around the ankles, and he had only one other man in front of him and a clear path for a touchdown. Pennington, in his 10th year, has owned the Chargers. Four games, four wins, 74% completions, six touchdowns, and no interceptions. Yeah, and after the disappointing loss last week to Indianapolis, that he was excited. 
exhausted but enthused by the way the offense played. He should be. Eight yards on the first down carry by Brown. He gets it again. Plows his way, stays on his feet. First down out to the 37 yard line. Finally, Weddle brings him down again. Miami offense, the $152 million Miami line. Oakland center Jake Grove moves to South Florida. He's strong and nasty. And Ronnie Brown, we've seen him. He puts the cat in Wildcat. 230 pounds, downhill runner, as you've seen. 136 yards against the Colts Monday night. I think that's the key, Dick, because people don't realize he's 230 pounds. Very powerful. Back to Brown. Caught in the backfield. He just patiently waits for something to happen. Turns a no gain into a solid gain. Boone and Burnett make the tackle. San Diego defense, injury epidemic. Chargers are thin, especially on the defensive line. Uh, Luis Castillo, defensive end, needs a big game against the run linebacker Stephen Cooper. San Diego's leading tackler again this year. Uh, back line, uh, defensive back starters, only one interception. Uh, Chargers are waiting for the Antonio Cromartie of two years ago led the NFL to come up with some picks. There's big Jamal Williams, his 200 and 360 pounds sorely missed how he occupied two blockers in so many all-pro seasons. Ricky Williams in, former San Diego high school star, and he on his first carry has a first down at midfield. Quentin Jammer jammed him out of bounds. You know, there's a lot of talk about this Wildcat offense and how effective it is, but the Dolphins doing it right now with just a very traditional offense with the tailback Back, 678 yards deep in the I formation. And when you've got two tailbacks like Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams, well, you talk about two great weapons for Tony Sperano. You can see just how effective they've been so far this year. One two punch of Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams. And one of the reasons uh, Coach Sperano likes that Wildcat, he gets both those runners on the field at the same time. Pennington off play action. Plenty of time. Dumps it underneath to Williams. He's got 10 more to the 40 yard line before Kevin Burnett can put the stopper on him. Bur Burnett, who uh, got injured in practice on Friday, had to be helped off the field with what appeared to be a knee injury back in the lineup, although he's coming out now after that big hit from Ricky Williams. But uh, the Chargers could not afford to have any more injuries anywhere, especially on their defense. Well, this is what. Tony Sperano's offense dead against the Colts on Monday night. Chew up the time. The Wildcat for the first time. Ronnie Brown will take the direct snap. Then to Williams. Fakes to him. And then Brown up the middle for five quick yards. That's really the beauty of the Wildcat. Either you get an extra blocker or you get an extra faker. The faker that time was Williams faking the uh, sweep play. And basically, this is David Lee, the quarterback coach, who helped devise this offense. But it goes way back. I mean, there's nothing new in the NFL. They went into the archives to figure out how to get both these great running backs in the game at the same time as Pennington continues to stay on the sidelines. And it all happened out of some desperation a year ago after an 0 2 start on the plane home from Arizona. So we got to do something different. And it really worked, didn't it, against New England? Here's Brown. Keeps it this time and weaves his way for 12 more. And it's a great attack on their first possession. Miami moving uh, very effectively. Let's look back at when you were playing, Dan. Here's uh, the old single wing. Lots of faking. You know, a lot of, you know, snap to the fullback, snap to the tailback. There's an example there where he fakes to the tailback. Reminds me of the old Michigan days and uh, Fritz Chrysler and the old buck lateral series that he brought to the Big Ten from Princeton. And I love hearing you and Merlin calling those games. <laughs> First down, Ricky Williams in the backfield. Bennington, the quick pitch is incomplete as Fasano, the tight end, not even looking for the ball. Yeah, it was a blitz off the corner and uh, Pennington read it, but Fasano did not see it. From this side right here, this is the uh, Tim Dobbins who outside linebacker. And I'm not sure that that is totally Fasano's responsibility because there was a back there to pick up the blitzing Dobbins. Twelfth play of this opening drive. Just under six minutes consumed by Miami. So what's new? It's right. Miami football. 45 minutes on Monday night. Fake to Williams. 
Looking into the end zone. Pennington dumps it off to Williams underneath. He's got it for what appears to be close to another first down. Tim Dobbins makes the tackle with Sean Phillips at around the eight yard line. That's 280 receptions in Ricky Williams' career. 280. No, they've got the two of the top five rushers in Miami history in the same backfield at times. And Ricky Williams, who's now second to the great Larry Zonka, and Ronnie Brown, who uh, needs only 33 yards today to pass Jim Kick and be the number four rusher in Miami history. Wildcat. Fake to Williams. Brown keeps. Weaves his way. And then powers to the six. Cooper there first for San Diego. Really, the unsung hero in this offense is Lou Polite, the fullback right here. Watch how he's going to lead on this play. It's a weak side slant. And Polite is so good at getting up on the linebackers, he gets Dobbins out of the way, and that gives Brown an extra five yards. Seven on the play, second and three. Ball just outside the Charger five. How impressive this opening drive for the Dolphins. Back to the basic set. Brown a tailback. Brown into the center of the line for a yard. Cooper again leading the way defensively for San Diego. Cooper at 235 out of the University of Maine. Well, you wonder, will the Dolphins have anything left if they have to have a couple more of these long drives today? This is what they did Monday night. you got to concern yourself. You know, these are professional athletes. I don't think that they'll be tired, but it is a hot day. And this is a very impressive 90 yard drive so far. Nora Turner sends in three fresh defensive bodies. Brown already with 51 yards rushing. Third down. Pennington keeps it, has the first down at the two. Chad Pennington. It was a great start. Marshall led thundering herd to a 13 to no season with Randy Moss as his uh, key target. Only 24 touchdown catches. To Boy, Moss. He, he took a shot. He's bleeding from the bridge of his nose after this hit. He got the first down, but he paid for it as it, his head is driven into the ground by Jacques Césaire right there. That cut the bridge of his nose. A little scrape on the top of his nose but Pat. he'll trade it for a first and goal it's his badge of honor Dick fake to Brown Pennington keeping and throws it away first play that hasn't worked in the entire drive everything connecting for the Dolphins including Pennington's nose with a Qualcomm turf yeah, you got to wonder about the uh, the nose. It doesn't appear to be broken. Often times the bridge of the helmet will come down on that uh, nose right at the bridge there and cause a little blood to come out. But he's a tough guy, smart guy. Threw that ball away. Second and goal. Brown tries the middle of the San Diego defense and a flag is down. Brown stops shy of the goal line. And now a critical first penalty flag in the game. It's going to be offsides against San Diego lining up in the neutral zone. Bill Levy is our official Offside. referee. Number 95 defense lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. So instead of third and goal, Phillips offside gives Miami a free down. Yeah, pretty easy to see right here. That uh, white helmet over the ball. He's way off sides. In fact, they're both off sides. Certainly from that angle, it appeared to be. That moves the ball inside the one. Second and goal. Brown and Williams split behind Pennington. It's recovered out of the end zone. Touchback, San Diego. Oh, my. Yeah, Justin Smiley couldn't get his hands on this ball. 
or it would have been a touchdown for Miami. Big hit right there on Ronnie Brown. Not, no possession there, no touchdown, San Diego ball. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. The Insight, a new hybrid from Honda for everyone. And by Bud Light, with a just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. Back in San Diego, the Chargers celebrating a big break as Brown fumbled the ball through the end zone for a touchback. Rivers takes over at the 20-yard line. A long drive of 94 yards, nine and a half minutes to zero points on the board. Rivers throwing deep down the sidelines to Jackson and Vincent Jackson. It was his big play receiver in front of Will Allen with the first down. Let's go back to Brown. Eric Weddle is going to come on the blitz, but I think Brown took his eye off the ball because he fumbles before Weddle hits him. Ball down by his knee. He pushes it forward. Here's Justin Smiley, number 65, looking for the offensive lineman's dream, but his helmet hits out of the back of the end zone without possession of the ball. Correct call and a touchback. The blue area in is the end zone area here at uh, Qualcomm Stadium. First down, Rivers, and he goes down hard on a good pressure from Kendall Langford, who has his first sack of the year. All conference at Hampton three times. Where he logged 23 and a half career sacks. Well, here he comes, and this is what the Dolphins need. They just had three sacks in their first two games this season. And Rivers had time to throw on the previous play when he hit Jackson, but he barely has time here. Brandon Dombrowski having trouble picking up number 70, Kendall Langford. Dombrowski in there for the injured Luis Vasquez at right guard. Rebuild offensive line with also uh, pro bowler Nick Hardwick the center out for eight weeks now throw underneath complete to Gates and Gates gets that yardage back plus one but that'll bring up third down and nine as the final seconds tick away here in uh, again an unusual opening quarter of football no score will return to San Diego California after these messages you're watching the NFL on CBS home of Super Bowl 44. And welcome back to San Diego for the second quarter. Dick Enberg and Dan Fouts, a most disappointing end of that impressive drive for Miami. You know, in the pregame show, Bill Cower was talking about the game's changed so much. He loves the run. It's all past now. Dan Marino couldn't stop smiling the whole hour of uh, coverage. You quarterbacks got to... Uh, you have to defend the entire field, and that's what the forward pass forces defenses to do. Although, if you watch Miami, yeah. uh, they could go down the field. They're running it effectively with their conventional offense, and then when they get in the Wildcat, they're almost unstoppable. That's an unbelievable mistake by Ronnie Brown dropping that ball uh, before he was hit by Eric Weddle. And to that point, he had dominated the drive with his runs over 50 yards. We open the second quarter. No score. Third down and 10. Michael Bennett in the backfield. Rivers throws over the middle wide open. It's Nane, and Nane able to squeeze a first down out to the 47. So despite the sack by Kendall Langford that puts Rivers and the Chargers in the hole, he's able to pitch his way out of it. And did you see Nane get up the field as soon as he made the catch? If he had done that last week against Baltimore, the Chargers might have won that game. But he did not dance that time, did not hesitate, knew what he needed for the first down, and went after it immediately. First down at the 47 for Rivers and the Chargers. Bennett and Mike Tolbert now in at fullback, the 5'9", 243-pounder from Coastal California, uh, Carolina. In the give to Bennett, fights his way into Miami territory at the 49. Well, two of the rivals of the West playing up in Oakland, Denver, Oakland. Let's go to JB. Hey, Dick, in the single biggest headache, coaches have to endure turnovers. Take a look at Jamarcus Russell, play action, trying to go vertical up top. Darius Hayward Bay slips, double covered, picked off by Denver. The Broncos capitalize when Cal Orton hooks up a Brandon Marshall. Two yard strike. Denver leads at 7 0 late in the first. Dick Enberg and Dan Fouts. All right, James Brown, Denver trying to move out to a 3-0 start here. Their new coach. And uh, the Raiders having trouble. Russell uh, 
In danger of losing that starting spot as Rivers fires over the middle complete. A diving catch by Malcolm Floyd. Floyd, the four-year receiver out of Wyoming. What a target. 6'5 and 225 and has regarded on the team as the best hands of the Chargers. Certainly the biggest hands and he needed them on this play. He got a break here as Sean Smith falls down, number 24, but he had a layout for this ball. We're going to see a lot more of Malcolm Floyd because of plays such as that one. He's going to be alternating more with Chris Chambers at that X receiver spot. Chambers, the X Dolphin. They're going to share duty today. Bennett in the backfield. He's the tail behind Tolbert. First down at the 32. Not much there at all for Bennett, who starred at Wisconsin. Pro bowler at Minnesota seven years ago when he rushed for nearly 1,300 yards. That was a fine tackle by Shannon Crowder as he read the uh, draw play and came in and closed on it fast. Of course, LaDainian Tomlinson with that bad ankle he sprained a couple of weeks ago against the Raiders on Monday night. They're not sure if he's going to be ready to play the Steelers next week. They would like to hold him out, get him an extra week after the Steelers. They have a bye week. That's a Sunday night game in Pittsburgh. Chargers next weekend. Second and nine. Rivers. Wide open. It's Vincent Jackson, and Jackson has another first down inside the 20. That's too easy. Nathan Jones on the coverage. Here's big Nate or Vincent Jackson as he's going to run just an out route but you can see the respect he gets from Nate Jones that's a little bit too much respect but right now Philip Rivers is starting off as he ended last week he's eight of nine for 90 yards and it's been sacked one time but pressured very little after that now more unbalanced line Dick as Clary goes to the weak side bad news for the Chargers they're in the red zone they're 0 for 5 for touchdowns last week here's Pro trying to get outside and then back into the 15 yard line will Allen with a tackle from his corner Fantasy football today brings you the last minute news and analysis you need to set your fantasy lineup live every Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, only on CBSSports.com. Well, this is a, a game mirroring what happened to these two teams last week. Rivers all pass. Miami using up all the clock with a run. No score. Dolphins ever so close. Brown fumbling through the end zone from the one-yard line. Rivers looks underneath, and it's complete to Jackson, and he's to the six-yard line. First and goal for San Diego. Allen bumped him out of bounds, and Jeremiah Bell there to assist. One way to get off the bump and run is for you to put your receiver in motion. As Jackson comes down here, then runs the crossing route, he's running away from the coverage. You can see the adjustment by Sean Smith. He's expecting help inside, but Jackson just powers by the linebacker, picks up the first down. First and goal just inside the seven. Sproles back in with Tolbert the blocker. Sproles, nothing there. Jammed up well by Randy Starks. He came over to Miami last year as an unrestricted free agent from the Tennessee Titans. Played his ball at Maryland. Rivers, a perfect six for six and 73 yards throwing the ball. He's the only quarterback in San Diego history not named Dan Fouts to throw for over 400 yards. Did it last week against Baltimore his best ever 436 yards that came up short Pennington bandaged up on that nose tuning up on the sidelines second and goal <laughs> Rivers dumps it incomplete and dangerously caroming back into the secondary of Miami and there was a moment there where you thought that Rivers might take off as it uh, the pocket opened up right in front of him at the last minute he sees Sproles but throws him a fastball a little bit too hard a little bit too high for the five six Sproles. The other thing with Sproles here is he's looking right away to see what the defense has to offer thinking about getting in the end zone may have taken his eye off the ball. So third and goal. It's so uh, shocking. Reality for the Dolphins, they've not had a takeaway yet. Now into their 10th quarter of the season. 
Rivers underneath, incomplete to Gates. Well covered. Good defense by Miami. Jeremiah Bell right there to deny. Yeah, great double team on Antonio Gates as the fans don't like another field goal try by the Chargers. But you got to give the Dolphins credit, and especially Bell for having the underneath coverage on Gates made it a very difficult throw for Rivers. Now, Dan, there's nothing more uh, good news, bad news than a field goal of less than 30 yards. That means you do get three. That's good. But the bad news is you were down inside the 10 and didn't get six. And you don't have to tell the Dolphin fans that either. They had the same problem last week against Indy. Nate Kading, 25 yards out, and Kading is a perfect 6-4-6 six six on the season. Chargers take the lead, 3-0. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sprint, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL, and by Macy's. Year-round activity here in beautiful San Diego. The surfers are out. San Diego, 3-0 on the short field goal, 25 yards. It uh, culminated a 72-yard drive in 14 plays. Hey, you're supposed to say something like gnarly after you see a surfer shot like that. It's a gnarly wave that time. Was it gnarly? I don't know. It's Patrick Cobbs to the 10. Cobbs, who played his college goal at North Texas, stopped at the 21, make it the 20-yard line. Good coverage by San Diego. Pennington and the Dolphins back on the field. 9-16 left in the second quarter. A reminder, fans can't get enough fantasy football. We'll check out Playbook Challenge. Every yard equals a point or touchdown challenge only at NFL.com slash fantasy. Dolphins start from their own 20-yard line, trailing 3-0. Ricky Williams gets the handoff, and he bowls his way for two or three into the arms of Jacques Césaire. Long-range drives by both teams. Uh, Miami 18 plays 94 yards from the one-yard line. The fumble by Brown lost through the end zone. Then San Diego takes it 14 plays and 72 yards and are stopped uh, outside the five-yard line. Settled for the short Nate Kading field goal. Ricky Williams, the running back behind Pennington. Looking for Camarillo, a former Charger, and he finds him in the near flat, short of the first down. Antonio Cromartie on the coverage. Camarillo, who was a free agent picked by the Chargers in 2005, was uh, on the roster for two years before waived and picked up by Miami. There's Sean Merriman. Not a good sign. The injury play continues. He's been suffering a bad groin. He's not in the lineup. Rookie Larry English, number 52, the top pick of the Chargers from Northern Illinois, is in at that spot. Third and two. There's English. Empty backfield. Pennington. Underneath, complete, but short of the sticks. Devon Bess with a catch, but good coverage by Quentin Jammer. How about an update? Let's go to New York and J.B. Hey, Dick, as Coach Bill Cowher said during the pregame show, a lot more passing in the NFL now. Dan Fouts would like it. Ben Roethlisberger looking, looking, scrambling. Hooks up with Willie Parker. They make it a 27-yard pass play. Eight plays, 64 yards, 10-0 pit. Back to Dick and Dan. Yeah, it's like the old AFL days, isn't it? Pass, pass, pass. Darren Sproles takes it on a bounce and unable to head upfield as uh, he is covered quickly at the 27-yard line on a 46-yard punt by Brandon Fields. Midpoint of the second quarter in San Diego. The Chargers with a short field goal, lead at 3-0, and take over after the punt at their own 27-yard line. Jacob Hester, a fullback with Rivers in the shotgun on first down. Pick throw is incomplete to Sproles in the left flat. And that's the matchup you wanted. Sproles on Jason Taylor. Well, tonight on the premiere of The Amazing Race, the Harlem Globetrotters get into the game when the seven-time Emmy winning series kicks off their new season. That's tonight after 60 minutes.
only CBS. And we're noticing Miami taking a linebacker out, putting an extra defensive back in the game. They do not fear San Diego's running attack. And in the shotgun again is Philip Rivers in his sixth year out of North Carolina State. Spot as one of the elite throwers, but no chance here as he has hammered second sack for Miami. Pressure coming through, and it may have fumbled on the play. Let's see. Yeah, he lost the ball in the process into the crowd of Dolphins. Philip Merling came up with it, the defensive tackle. So the blind side hit on Rivers dislodges the ball, and the Dolphins get a key turnover inside the San Diego 20 yard line. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, pocket just collapses from the it's Joey Porter with the big play taking it right to Marcus McNeil and then right to the quarterback Merling with the ball ball just popped up right in the air into his arms but Joey Porter with the pressure from the left side of the screen that's Marcus McNeil on the ground there's the ball in the air Dolphin ball and it was Porter who was jawing with McNeil the man he beat on the play before the game started Ronnie Brown Certainly wants to make amends for that fumble. He gets the handoff. Nose down, picks up nearly five. That's the first uh, takeaway for the Miami Dolphins all year. It comes here in the second quarter of the third game, halfway through it. Well, that combination of Jason Taylor and Joey Porter from the outside harassing passers throughout their career between them over 205 sacks. That's the 65th forced fumble just from Taylor and Porter alone in their careers. On second and four, back to Brown. And he high steps his way down to the five-yard line and a first and goal for Miami. Now coming into today, you can see that uh, the two great pass rushes you talked about, Dick, having a little bit of uh, a slow start to the season. But, you know, Porter just absolutely took it to Marcus McNeil there. McNeil, according to Norv Turner, had a less than wonderful game last week against the Baltimore Ravens. Porter has about 50 fans from Bakersfield with him. Yeah, that helped the, uh, the lift the blackout. <laughs> yes, it did. First and goal for Pennington and Miami. Back to Brown, caught in the backfield and brought down for a loss at the eight-yard line. Submarining through was Luis Castillo from his defensive end spot. Castillo with a big play. Yeah, Castillo got great penetration. There he is right here, number 93. Watch as he gets inside of Vernon Carey. How strong is Ronnie Brown? He shakes off Castillo, but the rest of the charge is there for the tackle for a loss. Larry English, the rookie linebacker, finished the job. Second and goal from the eighth. Polite at fullback. Brown at tailback. Pennington looks to the end zone and flips into the flat, complete to Polite, the fullback, and he's inside the five-yard line with his first reception of the season. Kevin Burnett, the tackler. Yeah, the Chargers just dropped everybody into pass coverage that time, taking away all the uh, avenues for Pennington, so he has to come to his outlet receiver. You can see right here, the here's Burnett. He's going to close fast. He's going to get help from the outside, from the corner on that side. Pro Marty, huge, huge play coming up for the Dolphins. Brian Hartline wide to the right, Ted Ginn to the left. Third and goal just inside the five. And they give it to Brown. He's caught in the backfield and smothered for a loss. O.G. Nawabo, the rookie from Michigan State, who was working at this time last year at the San Diego airport for Enterprise Car Rental. Here he is starting a defensive line in the big leagues today. He was making 11.50 an hour. <laughs> and he realized just how important it is and that what a privilege it is to play in the National Football League. His best play as a new pro for the Chargers on that one. Castillo helped him with the tackle. So in for the short field goal is Dan Carpenter. 24-yard attempt. Dan Carpenter drills it down the middle. He's now four for five on the year. Two field goals, three all here in San Diego.
Nate Kading, a 25-yard field goal, San Diego, and Carpenter answers from 24, tied at three, but Miami not happy about their two possessions. One, a long 94-yard drive that ended in a fumble through the end zone, no points, and that one after the fumble recovery at the 17, they got only three. Here comes Sproles with a kickoff. Best in the league so far this year. Boy, he does hit the lane hard. Out to the 30, and there might have been another fumble. Out of the pile comes one of the Dolphins. Was it whistle dead? Lex Hilliard, rookie from Montana, came up with the ball, but uh, the whistle had ruled the ball dead, the play over. So San Diego maintains possession. Gives us a chance to pause for these words. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Ford F-150. It's not just a pickup truck. It's a Ford F-150. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Walmart. And by Fidelity Investments. Turn here. Uh, the Seal Colony with a rough week. So Sunday, a good day to relax. Grab a little wink of sleep as we have a 3-3 tie here in the stadium. 3.20 to go in the first half in San Diego's previous three possessions. And on the last, uh, worrisome for the coaching staff how quickly Porter came in cleanly on the backside of Rivers. From the 30, Sproles gets outside. And cuts up field for eight yards. No rule in the NFL this year. You can't have the four-man wedge. Only two men can comprise a wedge. And Darren Sproles likes it. Let's go to focus. Well, the league wanted to get rid of some potential injuries in the four-man wedge. So they banned it entirely. And Sproles likes it because it uh, gives him more lanes to choose from. He's decisive. He's brave. He's a downhill runner. He sees a crease and just goes. He's had returns this year of 66, 59, and 53 yards, averaging 33 yards per return. What a weapon. On second down, it goes to Michael Bennett, and not much there at all for Bennett. He works his way to within a yard of a first down, out to the 39. Well, without Hardwick, who was a Pro Bowl center and really calls the blocking schemes, and Luis Vasquez, the rookie from Texas Tech, the right guard, both men injured. Murchkowski and Dombrowski filling in, and with Ladanian Tomlinson, the top runner for San Diego and one of the leading rushers all time, including second all time in touchdowns on the sidelines with injury. San Diego unable to move the ball very well on the ground. That takes us to the two minute timeout here in the first half. 3 3 the score. He's got fans everywhere. He'll be on at halftime. Sprint halftime report. All the scores and highlights coming up on the sprint halftime report. Third and one. Three wide receivers, a tight end in this alignment. The throw underneath, a diving catch by Nane. Oh, he's made some tough catches in the first three games of the season. He was well covered by Channing Crowder. First down at the 44. San Diego and Miami each has uh, all timeouts remaining and one timeout to be used right now by the Dolphins. 1.48 to go before halftime. Lots of NFL football on Wednesdays on Showtime. The Emmy Award winning inside the NFL is back with J.B., Bill Sims, Chris Collinsworth, and Warren Sapp. Longest running show on cable inside the NFL Wednesdays on Showtime. They reviewed the catch by Nane. He made an excellent grab and maintained possession with Crowder trying to rip it away down at the turf side. First down throw to the sideline, one hop to Jackson incomplete. Will Allen on the coverage. That's the second bounce pass that uh, Rivers has thrown this afternoon. He's been knocked around a little bit, feeling the pressure. Last time the Chargers had the ball, Joey Porter forced a fumble as he beat Marcus McNeil. But Rivers, you can see, mad at himself for missing an open receiver on that play. He started out nine for ten passing, but uh, only one for five cents. That was the first down catch by Nane. 145 to go, first half. 3 3 tie here in San Diego. Rivers steps up and throws wide open as Jackson. 35 30 to the 26.
seven. Vincent Jackson. No one paying much attention to the top big ball threat for San Diego. He has been miles open all half. Well, the average is about 18 yards a catch. What happens here is the defensive back, Nate Jones, falls down on the play. He had him in coverage man for man. Longest. Jones actually made the tackle. It was another defensive back that had fallen down. Longest play of the day for San Diego, 30 yards. Sproles, and he is hammered down by the San Diego, oh, Jason Taylor in there to make the tackle. Timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by KFC. Now get the great taste of new Kentucky grilled chicken on the KFC Ultimate Value Menu. All right, fans, all the highlights, all the action, late scores as well on the Sprint Halftime Report with James Brown and his crew. That's the Sprint Halftime Report coming up in uh, 66 seconds of game time. That's what remains here in the first half. Chargers second and 11 at the 27 of Miami. Sproles with Rivers. Rivers operating on the shotgun almost the entire game. Throws to the sideline, back shoulder incomplete and almost intercepted by Vontae Davis, the number one draft pick of the Dolphins out of Illinois. He played that very well. And he obviously uh, did his homework because the Chargers hit a similar play a couple of times last week against Baltimore, but it is that underthrown back shoulder pass to Floyd on purpose, and Davis played it like a veteran. Davis's brother Vernon, the tight end from Maryland, who was the number one pick of the 49ers. Uh, brother Vernon had a touchdown catch today and a tough loss. 49ers had it all but one until the final seconds and far of Minnesota pulled out. A huge win. Third down, dump it off to Sproles. Look at him scoot down to the 15 and pays a price for it. And they're wrestling for the football after Wilson made the hit on Sproles. Timeout called by the Chargers. 49 seconds left in the half. He's only 5'6 and 185 pounds. Nickname is Tank because he was 10 pounds at birth. Didn't grow much afterwards. But boy, does he play big. And what a courageous run. Got yeah. him the ball in the in open area. And a lot of Dolphins around him. It looked like he made three guys miss with his moves and then just got drilled by Wilson, but hang up, hung on to the ball to pick up the first down. At the Miami 15. One timeout left for San Diego. <clears throat> Rivers to the sideline to Gates. Skips out of bounds at the eight. A gain of seven, a flag down. This might be holding against San Diego. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 68, driving a forearm into the helmet on the ground. 15-yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, that's a rare call. The two-time Pro Bowl left guard of the Chargers, Chris Dealman, called for the personal foul. Yeah, the old referee, Ben Dreith, might have said he was giving him the monkey business on this play. <laughs> And more of the groundhog business, the way he was driving uh, his opponent. He's 68. Here's Dealman, and they're working inside. That is uh, Philip Merlin, who got the fumble. There's the right arm, forearm to the side of Merlin's head. Easy call for our official Bill Levy. But that's used to be what football was all about. But now it's kind of a more sensitive game. You can't hurt each other. Anyway. Chargers lead the league in penalties coming in. Throw underneath incomplete. And oh, he had Chris Chambers breaking free toward the end zone. Jeremiah Bell came in and uh, Rivers comes away wincing. Yeah, he took a real big hit. He was beat up a lot last week against Baltimore. Again, it's a blitz right up the middle. Just getting rid of the ball to save the yardage. That penalty did is it pushed the ball all the way out to the 30 yard line. So you add seven or eight yards to that. A field goal from this point would be a 48 yarder. Whereas the Chargers appear to have the ball inside the 10 yard line with the completion to Gates. Bell close to his seventh career sack, which would be a Miami record for a defensive back. 
Long yardage, quick throw to Nane, flanker screen, and he picks up some of the yardage down to the 22. Bell again in on the stop, former Eastern Kentucky star. And the clock runs to 26-25 seconds. Not sure why the Chargers aren't using their last timeout. They probably want to save it for a potential field goal. Won't that make the San Diego fans happy? They've had a steady diet of field goals the last two Sundays, third and 18. Rivers throws long toward the end zone and throws it away. Chris Chambers, the closest white jersey, and with five seconds remaining in the half, out comes Kading again. But if you can't run the ball at all, and the Chargers have not been able to run the ball at all, they've just 19 yards rushing today on 10 carries. That's what you get. Tough to complete passes when the defense has no concern at all for you running the ball. Kading's uh, six for six this year, all but one inside the 30. He kicked a 47-yarder against Oakland. This is 41 yards, and it's wide right, no good. Tony Sperano likes the way the first half ended, although so disappointed by the start of the Dolphin offense, a long drive and a fumble at the one-yard line through the end zone that denied points. So, dead even on a pair of field goals. Kading misses wide right from 41 yards, and that's the end of the first half. Tied at three all. We'll be back with a sprint. Halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Sperano doing a Carlton Fisk. <laughs> and we're ready for the second half in San Diego. Fumble is now being charged to Chad Pennington through the end zone. No points for Miami. And a very physical first half. And uh, we might even see a new San Diego quarterback. We see Billy Volek warming up on the sidelines. Nate Kading missing from 41 yards. It would have given the Chargers the lead 6-3 at the intermission. So tied at three as we go to the second half. And there's Volek. Former Tennessee Titan, the backup quarterback to Phillip Rivers. And this game being uh, brought to you in high definition on CBS. Well, <laughs> when you think you've seen them all, then you see something different. 3-3 uh, tie, we expected a high-scoring game. Yeah, 3-3, I mean, you know, that's not even football. This is uh, that Maybe it is too much football. But to both teams struggling offensively, Dolphins have gone away from the Wildcat. They yeah. ran it just for three plays in the first half for 19 yards. I expect we'll see more of that in the second half for San Diego. They have got to get something going on the ground or their quarterbacks, whether it's Rivers or Volek, are just going to get continue to get beat up by this Dolphin pass rush. You can see how futile San Diego has been in the first half running the ball and how little production Miami has gotten throwing the ball. Just 19 yards rushing for the Chargers and Phillip Rivers uh, just now arriving on the field from the locker room apparently being uh, attended you saw him late in that last drive by San Diego he was wincing in some pain when hit trying to throw Nate Kading's kick comes down to Patrick Cobbs underway in the second half Cobbs breaks one tackle and then dragged down across the 25 yard line a stop by Brandon Seiler 23 yards on the return Rivers now uh, working that shoulder as he warms up. Yeah, he made a couple of uncharacteristically poor throws in that first half. And you got to wonder about that shoulder. He's looked like he's really testing it, firing the ball hard as he's warming up on the sidelines. The very fact that Billy Volek, the backup quarterback, was seriously warming up indicated that uh, there was some thought that Rivers would not be able to start the second half. Ricky Williams, the running back behind Chad Pennington. And the quick throw into the flat is complete to Bess, the wide receiver, and he has a first down out at the 37-yard line. 11 yards on the pickup to Devon Bess. Looked like a running play, the backwards pass to Bess, but boy, it's just a huge game for both these teams. The Dolphins cannot afford to go 0-3 on this young season. Very few teams have even made the playoffs. No team has gone 0 and 3 and even made a Super Bowl, let alone win one. You know, that really extinguishes all the hope and fire that starts at uh, the Miami season after their terrific uh, comeback from an 0 and 2 start a year ago to win the AFC East. 
Ricky Williams again and a flag down thrown by the linesman. That's going to go against the Dolphins. False start. Number 82 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Brian Hartline the wide receiver. You take a look at the first half possessions that 94 yard drive was a thing of beauty took a lot of time off the clock 17 plays but resulted in a touchback as the fumble went through the end zone and then the uh, after getting the ball on the 17 yard line of the Chargers the Dolphins could only get a field goal that was on the fumble forced by Joey Porter getting a rivers in the backside first and 15. Green it to Ricky Williams and well read by the Charger defense. Good pursuit as Antonio Cromartie and Kevin Burnett collaborated on the tackle. Ricky Williams is a San Diego product. He had to get a bunch of tickets today too. I think the number was up around 50 or so but he played his high school ball at Patrick Henry High School here in San Diego and joins a, a list of a lot of great running backs that came out of this area. It's a well kept secret uh, nationally how many not just good running backs but Hall of Fame Heisman winning running backs have been produced here in San Diego. Second and long for Pennington. Fake to Williams. It's a screen the other way and Williams or no it's polite the fullback he fumbled the ball for a moment or is they calling it down by contact. Yes at the 39 yard line. Polite who hadn't caught a ball in the first two games. With a catch in the first half and another here to open the second. Now it's really a well designed play, a little bootleg. Speaking the fullback out, but was his knee down before the ball comes out? His bottom's down, that's a good play. Ground cannot cause a fumble. Good call by the officials. Bottoms count. Bottoms up. <laughs> oh, that's later. <laughs> Third down and seven. Brown and Williams now in the backfield, split behind Pennington. Pennington to throw under pressure and incomplete. Arm hit just as he tried to deliver the ball. Kevin Burnett in on top of the quarterback and he comes out holding his right arm. Cesare was there also number 74. And this is without Sean Merriman. He's out. Burnett comes in there. Now the whip to the ground there that may have injured the right arm of Chad Pennington. He took a hit uh, in the first half and a bloody nose big big kick by Brandon Fields drives Sproles back inside his five juggles and then is dropped immediately at the seven yard line covered well by Jason Allen a 55 yard punt by Fields uh, his longest of this young season and we'll check on Bennington when we come back. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Both quarterbacks have been under a heavy attack, and Pennington had his head buried in his hands during that timeout, and he's in some pain, and it would appear that uh, Chad Henney, who was the third quarterback announced by Sperano today will be replacing him. Sproles with a handoff gains a yard or two and that's about it. Randy Starks and company make the tackle for Miami as Philip Rivers who came out late from the locker room after being attended uh, is in for San Diego. Oh and Pennington goes to the ground. He's in a lot of pain. It looks like he might have hit his arm on a helmet on the follow through because it didn't appear that when he hit the ground it was that much of a force but it, he did was holding his forearm on his passing arm. Second and long deep in their own end and Dolphin show blitz bring one man Rivers throwing long has a man open incomplete to Vincent Jackson and Rivers under pressure again Langford in his face and that may have denied a possible long touchdown Langford hurrying Rivers on the throw and you know it's interesting talking to the uh, Dolphins about Chad Pennington and how tough he is they're saying right now we're getting the word that it's his right shoulder but it appeared that when he went off the field he was uh, holding his right wrist but his return is doubtful as he talks to the training staff. He's uh, been hurt so much seriously that he's twice been the NFL comeback player of the year. Rivers. Incomplete.
complete to Jackson again. Will Allen on the coverage and Rivers before the end of the first half, he too buried trying to throw the ball and appeared to hurt his right shoulder. And he got hit from behind there, driven to the ground by Jeremiah Bell. And he gets up here. And it's uh, obvious that there, he is in discomfort. And since that injury has not been his characteristic self. Mike Cypher is to punt it. Best fields with some running room. Breaks a couple of tackles. And he's into San Diego with territory at the 49-yard line before uh, Malcolm Floyd can make the tackle. 49-yard punt, nine on the return. We're tied at three in the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. Priority mail flat rate boxes only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. And by Verizon Wireless, America's largest mobile-to-mobile -mobile calling family. Can't bear to miss it Thursday on CBS. When the homeowners moved out, crime moved in. An all-new episode, CSI Thursday, only CBS. And that was a shot of Belmont Park down in Mission Beach. A wooden roller coaster still in play. Bennington shoulder pads off and they're applying the ice pack to that right throwing shoulder. So the Wildcat being employed now and it's uh, Ricky Williams running through a tackle and down for good yardage on first down a pickup of uh, five plus. So Chad Henney who was announced as the third string quarterback at the start of the game comes in which means that Pennington can't return even if he is healthy and that Henney is the quarterback now with the Wildcat Pat White can be deployed as a tailback receiving the ball and is not under center makes it somewhat more complicated for Tony Sperano on second down. Ronnie Brown to the 40 and inside the 40 yard line close to the first down marker. OG Nawabo makes the tackle. Yeah but regardless of who's playing quarterback right now for the Dolphins we're seeing what they want to do. They just want to go back to their strength and that's Ricky Williams. That's Ronnie Brown. That's running the ball behind this offensive line two plays and now they're in a third and short. And I, I would suspect that uh, we're going to see a lot of Wildcat from here on out. And maybe Chad Henney throwing the deep ball. That's Pat White on the sidelines who was designated as the second quarterback. We understand he can't come in either the rest of the game. Before the fourth quarter since he uh, was in the lineup. There's a quick blast by Ronnie Brown right at the sticks. And as they unpile. Chuck Cesare and Burnett make the tackle for San Diego. You know, off the strength of their outstanding offensive showing last week against Indianapolis, the Dolphins 59% conversion rate on third down, and they're perfect one for one on fourth down. The way they've been running the ball, if this is short of the first down, I would suspect that Sperano would go for it on fourth. And it is a first down. At the 39, tied at three, nine and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Both quarterbacks shaken by tough pass rushes on this sunny Sunday in San Diego. Chad Henney was the number two pick of the Dolphins a year ago. It was a pick that the Dolphins received from San Diego in the trade for Chris Chambers, wide receiver Chambers. He played his college ball at Michigan, a four-year starter with the Wolverines. He's caught as he comes away from center is charging through as Kevin Burnett. No one blocked Burnett inside linebacker. Now this is a blitz that had been giving the Chargers trouble. At number 99 is Burnett. He goes walks right by the fullback polite right between Donald Thomas and Jake Grove. And how do you do Chad Henney. First sack of the year for Burnett. Six yard loss on the play. Sean Merriman, the 
Pro Bowl linebacker for San Diego. We understand he's aggravated that groin injury. He's out for the rest of the game. Uh, movement before the snap. Henny throws into the flat to Brown. Short gain. Flag down. San Diego offside or full start Miami? That's the question. And the answer is San Diego offsides. Larry English. Offsides. Number 52 defense. Five yard penalty. He keeps second back. The rookie English a bit too anxious. Yeah, I mean, you just get the six yard sack, and now you give five of those yards right back. And now officially Chad Pennington with that shoulder injury. Uh, we don't know the seriousness of it but uh, he will not be able to perform the rest of the day under the circumstances with Henny the third string announced quarterback in he couldn't go back anyway. Second and eleven. Henny underneath short throw complete best. Good running after the catch, and he's down inside the 35 to the 31 before Eric Weddle can bring him down two yards short of a first down. And this whole quarterback situation makes you wonder, heaven forbid something happened to Henny, what did the Dolphins do? Well, if any team is able of taking care of that situation, it would be the Dolphins because they could put Ronnie Brown in the Wildcat and just run their offense out of that. Third and two, Henny. Who hadn't thrown a ball all year. Last year only seven for 12. So he's really been thrown into the wash. Underneath complete and a first down. Well done to Bess again. Ball at the 25 yard line. Now he is the future for the Dolphins. He goes out. Now they're going to bring in Ronnie Brown and run the Wildcat. But and he gets congratulations from Bob Lee the quarterback coach. Just like I taught you son. Good job. First down overcomes that sack by Burnett helped by a five yard offside penalty but he picks up the first down drive continues tied at three under seven minutes left third quarter. Brown takes a snap runs to the left. And good yardage again. Oh he is so tough to tackle. And you, you know what this offense is there's basically four plays and what they've added here this is just a, like a naked bootleg here because he's going to fake the ball to Ricky Williams and now just out to the weak side he's got his uh, back there Cobbs out in front and his wide receiver Chad Pennington looking on this is David Lee not Bob Lee Bob Lee's the general played for the Falcons I know that. David Lee of Arkansas used that uh, Wildcat formation, Wild Hog formation. Here's Brown again. Doesn't give it to Williams. Goes straight ahead for a first down easily. Stephen Cooper with a tackle. And Miami in this 3 3 tie deep now into San Diego territory. Kevin Burnett misses the tackle in the backfield, but that shows you, as you talked about, Dick, how difficult Ronnie Brown is to bring down. Six foot, 230 pounds, and the Wildcat averaging six yards a play. Very effective, and it's going to be counted on a lot the rest of the way today. 62 yards rushing against uh, Indianapolis on Monday night out of the Wildcat. Henny back in at the 13 yard line. First down. Williams at tailback. It's Ricky Williams at the 10 to the five yard line before Eric Weddle can make the stop. Williams uh, with his sights on that blue territory, the end zone, and a touchdown. And what a luxury to have a blocking fullback like Polite. Watch this. This is a misdirection by both backs. Polite looking around. And Ricky getting impatient, taking it down inside the five yard line. But rarely do you see a misdirection like that where the fullback and the tailback are going one way and coming back the other. Second and two at the five yard line, back to the Wildcat. Polite, the blocker, Brown with a snap. Takes it up the middle, jam, push back, no gain, maybe a loss. Good penetration by O.G. Nawabo, the rookie from Michigan State. Yeah, Nawabo right on the nose right here, but it's the linebackers, too, that get involved. They're just as patient as Brown as they meet him in the hole. And then the uh, pursuit, and Nawabo with another big play for San Diego. 
He gets a breather on third down. They allowed progress to the five yard line, so it's still third and two. Williams now the lone running back. Henny, the quick throw is incomplete. Might have been deflected. Let's hope it was deflected. Because it looked as if he wanted to go to the slam. The ball was deflected over the middle, incomplete. And then this game of field goals, out comes Dan Carpenter to give Miami the lead. Dan Carpenter running a field goal. This is uh, Alfonso Boone, who was just picked up a couple of days ago. He gets his big right arm up there, and the ball hit him in the elbow. But look, there was no place for that ball to squeeze in. His Chargers had. Double coverage. 23 yard attempt by Carpenter is there. He's had 24 and 23 yard field goals, and for the first time, Miami leads 6 3. Four minutes to go in the third. So the Dolphins are threatened. They get the ball to the five yard line, and then the defense of the Chargers stiffens. They settle for the field goal after a 44 yard drive. It's 6 to 3 Miami. Pennington on the sidelines out for the game. Right shoulder injury. Sproles on a short kick at the 8. Well covered by Miami. So kicking high and short to try to take away those lanes from Darren Sproles. 16 on the return. NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. Miami Dolphins love going west in the last 15 years. Seven times they met the Chargers, and they've won all seven games, three of them here at Qualcomm. And they lead 6-3 here in the third as Rivers pumps a long one for Floyd, and he comes down with it between two Dolphins. Oh, my, what a catch. You talked about his big hands, Nick. He certainly has them, and they're strong, too, because he had to pull this ball away from Sean Smith and Jabril Wilson. Beautiful throw by Rivers right on target. Could not have been an inch shorter or it's knocked away. What a catch by Floyd. Just what the Chargers needed. Rookie Sean Smith at 6-3. A cornerback was right there. Had him well covered. Floyd just stole it away. A 47-yard gain. First down inside the 30 of Miami. Sproles going to throw back to Rivers. Now Rivers looking downfield. Throws complete. Antonio Gates knocked out of bounds at the 10. Channing Crowder with a tackle. A little razzle-dazzle from North Turner. It's a good play by the Chargers because... The design is for Sproles to throw a backwards pass to Rivers as he does. Clearly backwards by a good two yards. Rivers reads the defense, and this is actually his outlet receiver, Gates. He had a receiver deep in the end zone. The Dolphins had that covered, but this ball now at the nine. And this is where the Chargers have stalled for two weeks against Baltimore and again today inside the 10. Sproles. Picks his way down for three, maybe four. Aiken Adele inside linebacker with a tackle at the six. Well, this is where the Chargers have to play to their strength. To get to this point, they attack the Dolphins with the bomb and then the trick play. They cannot afford to get conservative in this part of the field for two weeks in a row. They allow progress to the five, a four-yard gain for Sproles, second and goal. Jackson to the left. Gates in the slot left. Chambers to the far side. Chambers on the fade. Can't pull it in one handed. Good coverage by veteran Will Allen, former Giant. Yeah, I might want to go after a rookie in this situation. Nate Allen with good contact there, legal play all the way, and that ball just thrown three or four inches too far. Chambers couldn't bring it in with one hand. Will Allen with really good coverage. So third and goal at the five. Chambers again to the right. Sproles in the backfield. Gates and Jackson to the left. Rivers going to try to run it in and does. 
Jesus. There's a rarity in San Diego. Phillip Rivers with a rushing touchdown. Going in untouched. But this is the uh, old Red Sea parting. And Moses taking it into the end zone. <laughs> Gating out to try the extra point. That'll bring a smile to Rivers' face. Extra point by Kading Good. You think that was a design play? It didn't look like nah, a quarterback draw. I don't it? think so. I think that's one of those heads up play by a heads up quarterback. In his sixth season as the quarterback of the San Diego Chargers, Philip Rivers has just run in. A touchdown for the second time. Only his second rushing touchdown. And it's a 10-6 game. Patrick Cobbs back deep for Miami as Kading kicks it off. Spins it to the six. Cobbs wheels to the 28-yard line. And that's where the Dolphins would put it in play. Tackled by Paul Oliver. 22 on the return. Let's check the quarterback situation now for the Miami Dolphins. First, a look at the injuries Chad Pennington suffered in his career. Remember against the Giants in 03 preseason. Left wrist, missed six games. 2004 against Buffalo. Pennington tore his rotator cuff, missed three games. 05 against Jacksonville. Pennington again tore his rotator. This time, surgery missed the rest of the year. And in 2007 against New England, he sprained his ankle after being sacked. Returned to the game but missed the following week. And now a shoulder injury today. Talk about a tough road for Chad Pennington. The toss to Ricky Williams. And the big man running right through tackles and finally wrestled down by Luis Castillo near another first down. Yeah, it's been a rough day for Chad Pennington. Executed the running game very well, but uh, on this play, cuts the bridge of his nose, may have even broken his nose on that play. And then this is the injury that got him to the sidelines and out of uniform. Hope it's just a bruise, but when you've had a rotator cuff problem in your history, not a good sign. Nine yards for Williams on first down. Former Heisman winner of Texas. Gets the handoff, first down and more. Stopped at the 40-yard line. Jacques Césaire leading the defensive charge for San Diego. Now you really got to wonder how much of the game plan does Chad Henney have and how much will he be trusted with that game plan by Dan Henning the offensive coordinator. As a rookie as we said a year ago Henney just used sparingly three games no touchdowns no interceptions he threw the ball 12 times seven complete. On first down it's Williams a tailback flag down and that's a false and start against another Miami flag. yep false start number 19 offense five yard penalty still first down that's been two false starts by wide receivers today Hartline earlier and now again you talk about an inexcusable mistake they have absolutely nothing to do with the play check out 19 that's all it takes that's a false start. Can't have it. Got a feeling you might have a little discussion with your wide receiver <laughs> in the huddle after one of those. Well, he may not be in the huddle. You know, he may be over with the Gatorade or something. In the uh, green and orange jacket, that's Dan Henning, assistant with San Diego, former head coach here in San Diego. And incomplete to Lou Polite, the fullback in the flat. And you could just see Annie with a lack of experience seems to be in a little hurry a little impatient on his throws. O.G. Noabo has had quite a game this fellow that uh, said I used to write about this time you want a car at the airport I'd come out and show you the keys and how everything worked and he said I'd work out at night never had any hopes of uh, having a career like this that even North Turner said after we interviewed him a couple of days ago I would have lost a big bet if you'd have told me a month ago you would be interviewing 
Ogem de Nuwabo before the third game of the season. Ronnie Brown stuffed as he tries the right side as the final seconds tick away here in the third quarter. That'll bring up third down. End of three in San Diego. The Chargers six or ten and uh, the Dolphins six. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Warm and clear in San Diego. Temperature at kickoff time is around 85 degrees. San Diego leads 10-6 as we go to the fourth quarter. Dick Enberg and Dan Fouts at Qualcomm Stadium. Chad Henney for the injured Chad Pennington. Pat White cannot play the other quarterback for Miami because Henney came in for the injured Pennington before the fourth quarter. It's a third and 14 to start. And Henney caught in the backfield. And the whistle blew before the play was made. As Linebacker in on top of Henny. All starts. Number 66 offense. Five yard penalty. With the clock operator put 15. Thank Actually, you. the penalty becomes a plus. Third Otherwise, down. that would have brought up fourth down and a loss on the sack. And you wonder about the difference in the cadence of the quarterback. Pennington has his style. Henny comes in. Totally different style calling the plays. We've seen two false starts in a matter of moments. Now third and 19. The other good thing is that English did not whip Henny to the ground, or that would have been a 15-yard penalty. And an ambitious rookie often does that. Yep. Quick throw into the flat, incomplete off the hands of Bess. A little flanker screen, and English was right there to make the play. Oh, fourth down. And out comes the punter, Brandon Fields, who had a beauty as last kick. This is uh, Larry English right now, the number one pick. Watch the play he makes. This is an athletic move here with the left hand to swat that ball before it can even get the best. Heck of a play by the Rook. Here's Fields with Sproles drifting back inside the 20. Now Fields at the 19. See, oh, he had a lane up the right sideline and saving a very long play for the Dolphins was Reggie Tolbert, the veteran linebacker. He was the last one left. And welcome back to San Diego. Miami desperate for a win with an 0-2 start and a tough loss at home on Monday night. The Chargers 1-1. One one. They dropped a difficult decision to Baltimore last Sunday here at Qualcomm. Most points scored by a visiting team at Qualcomm in five years. Rivers pumps and throws long for Jackson. And he's all the way inside the 15-yard line. Another fantastic throw, a line drive by Rivers. How about his right shoulder? Nothing <laughs> wrong there. 56 yards on the play. Last drive, he goes 47 to Floyd. This time, he goes all that to his number one receiver, Jackson. And again, it's in with two Dolphins chasing Bell and Allen. Ball could not have been better thrown all that way. And Jackson did a good job of keeping his arms down to the last minute. He didn't tip off the fact the ball was about to arrive. Sproles. A little hole this time, and he burrows down close to the six-yard line. Jabril Wilson, that safety, makes the tackle. You know, as good as the throw was, Dick, he didn't have to put his arms up at any time. This ball is going to drop in right over his left shoulder. It's a post route. Bell caught up too close, and that ball strike. Ball spotted at the Miami Six. Jackson, by the way, five catches for 120 yards today. Another big day for him. Back to Sproles, misdirection. But he runs into a sea of green jerseys after a yard gain. That'll bring up third down and about a yard and a half. Now, it looks like Sproles just has a flat tire there. His shoe came off, so he's okay. But now you're faced with those third down situations. Big decision for San Diego here as far as do you go conservative or do you put in your wide receivers and take advantage of the advantage you have on the outside. Looks like they're going three wide. Chambers far left slot Jackson to the right Nane. Tight end Gates on the right side. Rivers 
Big pressure on him. Had to throw in a hurry and complete to Sproles. Had no chance. That's a great twist inside. Kendall Langford from his defensive end spot. Again, it's coming right up the middle on the quarterback. He's just totally unblocked. Miscommunication in the offensive line. Rivers did a good job to dump that one. Another very short field goal for Nate Kading. This one 23 yards. He missed from 41. Pass connected from 25 and now 23. It's a seven point game. NFL on CBS is sponsored by DirecTV. Follow your favorite team no matter where you live with NFL Sunday Ticket on DirecTV. FedEx, we understand your business could use a Dick Butkus pep talk. And by Chevy, put us up against anyone and may the best car win. The sand in San Diego. 12 and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Chargers once again stop shy of the touchdown in the red zone. Settle for the short field goal as Chad Pennington, now a spectator, will watch as this replacement Chad Henney takes over. Patrick Cobbs fields it at the goal line. And Cobbs dumped across the 20 at the 21-yard line. Tackled by Paul Oliver. Rivers thought he might be injured. His arm has been very strong in the second half. Some of the headlines today in the NFL. Michael Vick uh, returning to NFL play. Spot duty. The Jets, first time they've started 3-0 in five years. The Giants as well. And the Lions, after 18 consecutive losses, defeat Washington 19-14. Here it's 13-6 San Diego. Plenty of time. 12 and a half to go. Miami starts from the 21. Chad Henney, the quarterback, with Pennington. Injured. Throws downfield incomplete. Little low for the diving Ted Yen. Well, you know, Dan Fouts, uh, when talking to Tony Sperano yesterday, he used the word several times, we're not getting enough chunk yardage. And that's what he means, a pass play that's over 15 yards. We see how important it's been for San Diego. But that ball coming in a little bit low for Ted Ginn was a tough catch, but it's a catch you've got to make to give your team a lift. Second down, Henny again. Throws to this side, has a man open again, but again, it's behind again. He can't twist back and bring it home. Yeah, the one thing these receivers got to realize, you've got a new quarterback in there, hasn't played a whole lot. He's going to be off target. This ball thrown behind Ginn, but Ginn has the ball against his body and can't make the catch. Now, this is totally out of character for Miami, having to convert on third and long, probably with a pass. And this crowd in San Diego, 67,000, trying to support the defense. Henny under pressure. Nice job of getting out of the trouble and then fakes and then throws downfield. Complete, but was he across the scrimmage line? A flag is down. It's Hartline taking it to the end zone, but he was well beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the football. A good two or three yards. A legal forward pass. Number seven of the offense beyond the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the spot of the pass. Loss of down. Fourth down. That would open up the game, though, if they eliminated that rule. <laughs> You'd get more than field goals. Shoot, I might come back and play. <laughs> the ball was snapped on the 21 yard line. Great job at getting around. Now he's faking Castillo. Now he's faking the rest of the world. He takes a shot from Jammer, and Jammer said, Hey, what's that all about? He can't throw it from three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Loss it down goes with a penalty, so on fourth down, out comes the punting team for Miami. You know, Henny showed you he's a tough guy to drag down as he was in the Big Ten the last four years. So counting uh, not last year, of course, as a rookie here. 6'3 and 230 is Henny. Fields. Bad kick off the side of his foot. Scoots out of bounds around midfield. After a brilliant 55-yarder in the first half, that one uh, not very good. And Quentin Jammer there on the sideline. Joey Porter, who else there to hear the conversation? 
The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sony Bravia HD TV. High definition, it's in Sony's DNA. And by Bud Light, with a just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. Fans, a reminder, tomorrow on CBS, Charlie Sheen and Emmy winner John Cryer star in a new episode of TV's number one comedy, Two and a Half Men. That's tomorrow. Only CBS. Sproles in the backfield. The Chargers begin at the Miami 49. Head down. He's tackled forward to the 45-yard line. Joey Porter not in there. He is suffering from a hamstring, wanted to play today. So many friends and family down from Bakersfield. He said, I'm not going to be on the bench, but finally that injury aggravated has uh, the brilliant linebacker on the sidelines after he made a big play in the first half, a sack and forced fumble that gave Miami the ball at the San Diego 17-yard line. Yeah, but the Dolphin offense couldn't get anything out of it except a short field goal. Doesn't look as if he's going to return. Tolbert and Sproles in the backfield on second down and six. Back to Sproles. And he's tackled in the backfield by Jason Taylor. The veteran from Akron, the oldest of the Dolphins at 35 after a year away with the Redskins, returning to the homeland down in South Florida where he has been Hall of Fame brilliant. He's just so tall at 6'6". Six, six and long arms still has that quickness and to bring down Darren Sproles it looked like Sproles had him where he wanted him out in space there tried to make a move but uh, Taylor said not this time. Well third down and long. Now they in motion. Quick throw to the middle and complete to Jackson flag down. Will Allen covering on the play. He doesn't like the flag that's for sure. Uh, he said that Jackson pushed off on him. My question is, was this ball catchable? Was it too high for both of them? Apparently, it was Last catchable. Number, number 25 defense. Spot of the foul, first down. Will Allen is 5'10", Jackson 6'5", not thrown too high. More of a defensive hold than pass interference, but I guess he was beyond the five yards when Allen... Uh, Checked him with the forearms. That's five penalties against Miami today. San Diego came in with the uh, worst numbers on penalties, just three this afternoon. Malcolm Floyd to the left. That goes full as well. He's, he's going to enjoy that uh, hot tub and ice bath after the game today. He has been the workhorse. Fans don't like the play selection by North Turner but Turner's thinking about the clock taking time off the clock keeping it rolling. Fans also love the bomb. I mean Rivers in the second half three completions for 121 yards. That's I think 40 yards a clip. I don't know Professor. Sproles gets a breather and Michael Bennett comes in. Second and eight under ten to go. Seven point game. Dolphins defense uh, challenged here to get the ball back down by only a touchdown. Here comes pressure from the outside. Rivers trying to dump it off. Almost threw it into the arms of Philip Merling and Channing Crowder. Michael Bennett was a maybe an ad lib shovel pass. And Randy Starks number 94 almost comes up with it. Here is you can see that Starks comes in there looking for Bennett. It's an incomplete pass. Shoveled forward by Rivers, dangerously so. And a chess pass in basketball. So third down and eight. Bennett stays in. Manu Maliuna in the backfield, the tight end. Rivers over the middle, complete to Gates. He's to the 25 and a first down. Gabriel Wilson with a tackle. And the tight end burns the Dolphin defense again. Yeah, he's a tight end, but he's really a wide receiver. The former basketball player right here watches. He knows what he wants to do against man-to-man -man coverage that's played way too soft by Jabril Wilson. And again, a tight end makes a key play against this Dolphin secondary. First it was Gonzalez, then Dallas Clark, now Antonio Gates. Fourth catch for Gates today, 50 yards total. First down at the 25. Sproles again. 
Dodge, oh, no, this is Bennett. Nice piece of running by Bennett. He was moving those feet like Sproles dancing left and right and found himself a small hole and picks up a gain of nine. Yeah, running behind Dombrowski and Jerome Clary, Jeremy Clary, the right side. Good block by Dealman there. And how about the patience and vision of Bennett to pick up that first down or click close to that first down nine yards on the play picked up by the Chargers on waivers from Tampa Bay a year ago Bennett stays in slightly bigger than Sproles 5 9 and 207 inside handoff and he Mike Tolbert this time battles down to the 10 yard line Tolbert a rare carry in fact his first of the season you don't you don't hear the booze though do you they're making first downs with these play selections by North Turner of course the big pass play to uh, Gates got him the first down and now they're moving it on the ground and last week was five red zone possessions no touchdowns four field goals bit better today for North Turner's team one touchdown two field goals in their four previous drives into the red zone. A little misdirection. And Bennett able to submarine under a tackler, pick up another yard or two before Langford downs him. This is where the play clock becomes so important for San Diego and for Miami. The Dolphins cannot afford to allow a touchdown here. A field goal puts him back by 10 points, but the play clock, Phil Rivers will keep his eye on it, especially after what happened last week when he had a couple of delay of game penalties that cost the Chargers. Look at the size 17 is number there to remind him. Take a look up here. <laughs> he was laughing at himself last week after the fact. He throws into the flat. Almost intercepted by Jason Taylor. He read that play all the way. And Taylor, who in his career has seven interceptions, three of them for touchdowns, was right there. And this would have been another touchdown. If he can haul this one in, all he has to do is beat the quarterback, Phillip Rivers. And my money's on uh, number 99 in that foot race. Well, that could have been huge for the Dolphins. Would have tied the ball game. Here's the 10th play of this drive. Five minutes consumed. Play clock down to single digits and Rivers running out of time. So he spends the first San Diego timeout of the second half. With Dan Fouts, Dick Enberg, Suzanne Smith, uh, director and producer Bob Monsbach at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, where the Chargers own the lead 13 to 6. They've used uh, Miami time on this drive, consuming almost five minutes. And they have it at the eight yard line, third down and seven. And if you go to back to Miami's last possession, it was three straight incompletions from young quarterback Chad Henney. Painful to see Pennington once again injured on the sidelines. Rivers fade to Floyd and no flag. Will Allen able to run underneath the receiver. Rivers wanted a penalty. Rivers underthrew this ball too much. Again Allen at 510 Floyd 65. The ball is thrown too short for Floyd, who's trying to haul this one in with one hand. Well, yeah, Allen had stumbled in coverage, so that left Floyd open. And uh, there was not any contact before the ball arrived. So here's another. <laughs> Is there an echo here? 26 yard field goal for Katie. 25 23, and now 26. He missed from 41. Extends the San Diego lead to 10. Chad Bennington injured right shoulder on the sidelines. Chad Henney who was listed as the third quarterback being utilized by Tony Sperano as Patrick Cobbs takes a knee and Dolphins will start at the 20 yard line. A tough day for Pennington. He's driven into the turf in the first half. Bloody the nose and on this play injured his shoulder. Now the reason there's some confusion here. Yesterday, Sperano had a tough decision to make about whether or not Joey Porter was going to be able to play today. So he told us he wanted to keep all three quarterbacks active, but then changed this morning, Dan. Because uh, Cameron Wake, who had not played yet, the Canadian football star, 
Uh, they needed him to take the place of Joey Porter. That forced a change in the quarterback position. You only have so many guys suited up. Throw to Bess, and Bess is wrestled down by Cooper after a short game. So he had, this morning, made Henny the third quarterback with White the second quarterback. And then when Pennington's injured before the fourth quarter, that takes both, uh, or takes White out of the picture. He can't play. And not only takes him out of the picture, it takes a, a big chunk of this offense of the Wildcat out of the picture as well. They had some major plans for Pat White today. Big hole up the middle for Ricky Williams, and he plows for a first down out to the 31-yard line. Let's go to J.B. in New York. Dick and Dan, Cincinnati staying within range of the Steelers here. Cedric Benson with the handoff, 23-yard touchdown run, but the two-point conversion is no good. The second extra set of points, if you will, that are no good for Cincy 2015. Pittsburgh back to Dick and Dan. All right, thank you, JB. That long time rivalry uh, heating up late. Bengals uh, threatening the Steelers here on first down. And he throws intercepted. It's Eric Weddle for a touchdown. Weddle, a safety from Utah, where he played every position, including quarterback. He read it all away. A nifty pick by Weddle, and he has his first NFL interception for a touchdown. And we've all done it as quarterbacks, thrown interceptions for touchdowns, and you learn from mistakes such as this one. But Henny, looking to the right side of the field, came all the way back to the left side against the zone where the defensive backs are reading his eyes, and that's what Weddle did. Picked it off and went in for the score. Kading hits the extra point. The Chargers build their lead to 23 6. And Weddle is uh, receiving the congratulations on the Charger sideline. And this is what we're talking about as far as reading the quarterback's eyes. Henny dropping back, looking this way. Here's Weddle. He's got this receiver on this route. But look at his eyes. He's looking at the quarterback as Best comes down the field. Henny comes back late. Easy pick for Weddle. A walk-in touchdown for San Diego. Looking right, coming back left. Not ever seeing Weddle. He sees him now, the back of his jersey, going into the end zone. Yeah, that's one of the ugly sights for quarterbacks, reading the number of an opposing player going the other way. And a rough baptism for Chad Henney, who came into this game early in the second half with the injury to Chad Pennington and uh, Coach Sperano. Trying to make uh, Henny feel that, hey, this is just part of the growing process, as you've uh, indicated. Well, that, that's the future for the Dolphins. And the future is now, depending on the severity of the injury to Chad Pennington, he's going to have Chad Henny as his guy for the next couple of weeks. So now the challenge uh, borders on the impossible for the Dolphins, trailing by 17. Cobbs. Miami needs something big and quick. Cobbs able to find his way to the 24-yard line. As we remind you, next Sunday, the NFL on CBS features single-header action. It'll be the Ravens at the Patriots. The Titans at the Jaguars will be down in Jacksonville, Dan and I. Or Mark Sanchez and the 3-0 Jets matching up with Drew Brees and the Saints, who could well be 3-0. That's quite a game. Check your local listings, beginning with the NFL today, live at noon Eastern. 9 o'clock out here in the West. Uh, Henny, the former Wolverine, uh, trying to recover from that last interception touchdown. No one open. Goes to the sideline, complete to Camarillo for short yardage. Ted Ginn does not have a reception in the game. Ginn, who had 11 on Monday night and leads the Dolphins with 13 on the season. Had a couple of balls aimed his way. The last possession was not able to come up with a couple of poor throws by Henny. And he working now from the shotgun with Ronnie Brown to his right. Ball start in the 72 offense. 
Five yard penalty, second down. It's just that old, as you indicated, Dan, that the delicate nature, a new voice, a new player, unaccustomed to the rhythm of his count, and West. That's the third uh, five yard penalty. And, and we're seeing also at the, at the other end of it where the receivers and the timing between the quarterback and the receivers isn't there. This is just a tough situation for any offense. But this offense is not going to strike a whole lot of fear in you as far as throwing the ball coming into the game. But they were so good running. You go back to that first possession, Dick, when they couldn't get it in the end zone after driving 94 yards. Yeah, that was game changing. Henny hit as he throws incomplete to Ricky Williams. Sean Phillips with the pressure on Henny. We go to New York and JB. Dick and Dan, if New Orleans gets a ground game to go with that prolific passing game, look out. Take a look at Pierre Thomas. 34 yards down the left sideline. Pay dirt. Three plays, 66 yards. Pierre with 76 yards rushing so far. 17 7. Saints over Buffalo. Dick and Dan. All right, Drew Brees, who was a star here in San Diego, migrates to New Orleans. He's about to take the Saints to 3-0. Third and eight, Henny. Underneath complete to Buff, breaks a tackle, and Devon Bess has got a first down up to the 35-yard line on a good second effort. Real good upper body strength by Devon Bess as he broke the tackle of Quentin Jammer coming on the crossing route. You can see the zone by San Diego. Jammer trying to go high, just spins off Bess. Out of bounds, first down. Six catches for Bess. How does a guy out of Hawaii that caught 293 passes in Hawaii and not get drafted? No respect. 54 catches as a rookie last year, third best by a first year receiver in the league. Henny again goes to sideline, and there's Jammer looking for the pick. Almost deflected to Weddle. You know, part of uh, playing in the NFL are incentive clauses. This is where you get them, either rushing the pass or picking up sacks or picking off passes. Jammer thinking about that potential interception. That might have scored. What was your incentive clause? <laughs> Just someday to work with you, Dick. <laughs> That's all I need. But the money doesn't come with that. I'm talking about <laughs> football where you make the big bucks. Henny will screen to Brown. And he draws a lot of traffic over there. To the 41 yard line goes Brown, and the clock runs with it. Four and a half to go. Jammer with a tackle. One of the better tacklers for cornerbacks in the league. So Henny just uh, in the toughest of spots, uh, trailing 23 to 6. And the Chargers teeing off on him. He goes up on top for again, but overshoots out of bounds. Right now, Vernon Carey is on the ground, the right tackle for the Dolphins. Former number one pick. He is injured. Mm. Carey in his sixth year, played at Miami of Florida. Grew up in Miami, high schooler there. Talk about teeing off, Dick. This is uh, an example of it. Larry English, the number one pick of the Chargers, working against Vernon Carey. Here they are, right here, the two of them. Three-point stance by English. And what happened there, it appeared that the back, as he was releasing, uh, tripped Carey. And now Carey's right knee seems to be a problem. It just always has puzzled me, Dan, the inordinate number of injuries the first month of the season. You get down into November, December, and rarely do you hear about a serious injury, and there's just a rash of problems, all teams suffering, certainly San Diego, and here Miami with a critical injury to Pennington today. You know how bad it is for San Diego. We saw all those injuries coming into today's game and last week's game. North Turner's son, who is a student at the University of San Diego, tore up his knee playing flag football on Thursday. He's resting comfortably at home watching the broadcast, but has it been a bad month for North Turner with his team and his son? Football and injury in the same sentence. There's Nick Hardwick, the outstanding center. Ankle surgery, he'll be out for eight weeks at least. And of course, Jamal Williams, the giant defensive tackle, he's out for the season. Fourth and four. Henning. Gets the first down to Bess. 
And uh, he fights his way out across the 50 and down to the San Diego 47 yard line. Under four minutes to play. The best has got the type of uh, inside ability to make to uh, run routes over the middle kind of like a Wes Welker with his quickness after the catch picking up the first down. That's a good product out of Oakland California. Penny. And what a catch by Ronnie Brown staggering reaching and pulling it in. What a play by Brown at the 21 yard line. Jammer and Gregory on the coverage. And that's what the Dolphins like about Henny is this big arm. And a good catch by Ronnie Brown. I wonder if they'll take a look at this upstairs, whether the shoulder was out of bounds. Charges would have to challenge. Uh, it's not inside two minutes, and there is the red flag thrown by North Turner. Such a great effort by Ronnie Brown. I'm not sure it's going to stand, though. As he bobbles it, if he catches it clean right there, there's no problem. But as San as Diego's he, challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. But if they rule that the elbow got down before the shoulder, that's a completed pass. Yeah, I think it might have. That looked like a catch. And certainly the effort is dirt deserving of a catch here. Hard to tell from that angle. Boy, talk about an athletic play. Former outfielder in baseball, left-handed hitting and throwing outfielder Brown was drafted very high by the baseball Mariners, but elected to stay with football. Check out his right elbow because uh, I think he had possession throughout the catch. If the elbow goes down and touches inbounds as it appears to do, this is uh, Dolphin Ball. It's a great job by our crew blowing that up and showing how clearly that is a completed pass. Uh, the challenges that have been made by head coaches around the league, uh, pretty good eye. That's a better percentage of reversals than you get in tennis, that's for certain. <laughs> yeah, but in tennis, you might get a ball stuffed in your mouth. <laughs> Ole. <laughs> Only on a rare occasion. <laughs> Norv Turner, who was a backup quarterback in his playing days at the University of Oregon. There's this mean guy in front of him and just wouldn't let Norv get on the field. Dan Fouts. <laughs> After reviewing the play, the receiver's right knee was down inbounds with possession. It is a catch. San Diego's charged their first time out. So the completed pass and a first down at the 20. They're saying right knee went down. At about the same time the elbow did, so that is a good call. Now, North was the backup quarterback. In fact, his job during a game was to tell everybody on the sidelines, hey, back up, back up. <laughs> did you have any indication at that time, the cerebral nature of Turner, that he would become a very successful head coach? Not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Chargers, have, Chargers have one timeout remaining, not two. Kenny looking for a touchdown. Instead goes underneath short for Ricky Williams inside the 15, a gain of about seven. Stephen Cooper grounds Williams. Stephen Cooper, Cooper Clock running. Uh, Miami does have three timeouts. Second and four. That interception uh, by Eric Weddle absolutely killed the Dolphins' chances here in the fourth quarter. But this is good work for Chad Henney for the future. Seven-yard drive, engineered by Henny. Back to Williams, to the 10, the 5, touchdown Miami! Ricky Williams with his first rushing touchdown of the season. 14 yards on the touchdown run. Now, Dick, we talked about the great high school running backs in San Diego. Marcus Allen played here, Reggie Bush, Rashawn Salam, Ricky Williams. That's four Heisman Trophy winners from the San Diego High School football. And how about Terrell Davis? Won a couple of Super Bowls. So getting back to that story. Ricky Sean, he's still got it. 52nd rushing touchdown in his career as Dan Carpenter out for the extra point. 
and cuts the San Diego lead to 23-13. Well, Ricky Williams on a uh, misdirection, started left, comes back right. Now he's going to break two tackles there and then add the exclamation point on Eric Weddle in the end zone. Well, with 2.51 to go and all their timeouts, we might see an onside kick. And just to give you visual evidence of uh, the running back talent produced by the city of San Diego. How about that? 81 Heisman to Marcus Allen. Bush, the Heisman winner at SC. Terrell Davis, two Super Bowl rings. Rashad Salam, who played eight-man football at Country Day here in San Diego. Heisman. And a Heisman also, Ricky Williams at Texas. Down by 10. The Dolphins obviously will be looking at an onside kick and there's been some changes this year in uh, how you can align your kicking team in the onside kick formation and you can see it's a it's again it's a safety issue they don't want those huge collisions and the ball is bouncing along the ground so they've limited the number of players you can put on each side of the kicker at least four on each side and one of them has to be outside or two has to be outside the the uh, numbers see the on the near side you have two down outside the numbers on this side and the kick is short and uh, touched by san diego and covered by san diego how do you Stephen kick it Cooper. short how do you kick it short when your team needs an onside kick and you kick this ball what seven yards you, get, you never give your guys a chance to recover it Actually, they, they took a pretty good bounce though as uh, Antonio Gates went diving in there that could have bounded off him and uh, chance for Miami that would have been the only chance San Diego touching it early and not recovering it but they did something else to work on thinks Tony Sperano. With 2.51 left, San Diego ball. And now Miami will have to uh, start spending those three timeouts. Darren Sproles, they'll try to tackle the ball, stack him up after a gain of a couple. And for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS and the game between the Miami Dolphins and the San Diego Chargers. Dick Enberg with Dan Fouts. And our score here in San Diego, the Chargers 23, the Dolphins 13. The season premiere of 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following the game, except on the West Coast, where it'll be seen at its regularly scheduled 7 o'clock time. Miami has used one of those three timeouts. Pretty interesting uh, 60 minutes tonight, uh, Dan. It's a regular duty at our house. <laughs> the, uh, Bernie Madoff, they've got an investigator wondering where did all that uh, green go? And uh, we might hear some interesting uh, investigative news in the premiere tonight on 60 Minutes. I'll be tuning in. You bet that. Timeouts left to Miami, back to Sproles, right into the teeth of the defense, and a quick whistle and timeout. Paul Soliai, defensive tackle, 355, made the stop. Well, part of the story of this game, not just the score, the injury to starting quarterback Chad Pennington. And on this play, into the shoulder, probably as he threw the ball, and Philip Rivers, who banged up his shoulder in the first half, scores on a run, and Eric Weddle on an interception of 31 yards. It was the big play, and now Ricky Williams finally gets Miami into the end zone, his first rushing touchdown of the year. I still want to go back to the very first drive of the Dolphins. They started the drive on the five-yard line. They were totally unstoppable, took a lot of time off the clock, got all the way down to the Charger four-yard line, a bad handoff between Pennington and Ronnie Brown resulted in the ball being fumbled through the end zone. So instead of getting at least three points out of it, they get nothing. The Chargers get the ball and a discouraged Dolphin offense for two weeks in a row. Yeah, it was a nine and a half minute drive. Screen it out to Antonio Gates to the tight end. First down and more to the 18 yard line. 
That's unfair. A little tight end screen. Let that big guy get a running start on the defense. He did a nice job of stepping inside the blocker, too, to get down the field. And boy, then he, he got up a full head of steam and started steamrolling Dolphins. That's the last time out for the Dolphins, except for the two-minute warning. A reminder tonight on 60 Minutes, where did all of the Bernie Madoff money go? The man in charge of searching for it has some answers, and he's on the season premiere of 60 Minutes, and then premieres of the Emmy Award-winning Amazing Race and Cold Case, only CBS Sunday night. Well, again, 0-3. Spells disappointment in this league, a no three start. No one has ever gone to the Super Bowl after losing their first three games of the season. Emotionally, that takes such a bite out of you. The long flight home for Miami. And a tough schedule staring him in the face. Toughest in the league. Bennett. And finally dragged down by Will Allen. The flag, he may have gotten into the face mask of Bennett. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 25. Defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And a rule put in, Roy Williams tackles at Dallas, uh, grabbing the back of the nape of the jersey and getting inside that shoulder pad and then wrestling down. And that's the call against Allen. Heads up play by Bennett not to uh, go out of bounds to stop the clock in an unfortunate call against the defense but that's a safety issue as well and most of the rule changes the last several years have been identified through a way of protecting the player too many injuries and we've seen that even with those rule changes 218 left Bennett it's over, guys. It's over. And hit. he tackled after a yard or two and uh, that'll let the clock tick down to the two minute warning here in San Diego with the Chargers in front by 10. Back in San Diego where the Chargers lead, 23-13. Stay tuned for those of you that are joining us for 60 minutes. We'll have uh, 60 minutes and the entire Sunday night lineup in its entirety. Another great show, season premiere of 60 minutes to follow the end of this game. He gave us to Sproles outside of the five and tripped up at the four yard line. Will Allen and Channing Crowder team up on the tackle. Well, there's the Miami toughest schedule in the league. They started, of course, with uh, uh, Atlanta, a playoff team, then Indianapolis, playoff team, then San Diego, playoff team. And they got a couple weeks to wait for their bye to get healthy. Remember, Joey Porter did not play the entire game today with a bad hamstring. And, of course, the injury to Chad Pennick, we don't know that how bad it is, but that bye couldn't come sooner for Tony Sperano and the Dolphins. On third down and goal. It's Bennett stacked up in the center by Aiken Adell. The San Diego Chargers also starting after a tight win over Oakland 24-20, losing to Baltimore 31-26 last week, and now Miami go to Pittsburgh Sunday night game and then the bye. They're hopeful that LT will be back after the bye. If not before, they still haven't ruled him out for the Pittsburgh game, which is on a Sunday night. Denver is now 3 and 0 after their win today. So after the bye, three straight AFC West games, Denver, Kansas City, Oakland for San Diego before they go to the Big Apple to play the Giants. So on fourth down, Rivers gives again to Sproles, and Sproles not able to get into the end zone as Will Allen makes the tackle with 32 seconds and on change of possession, the clock is stopped. And Miami will have 32 seconds. First, we go to James Brown in New York. All right, Dick and Dan, Cincinnati has pulled it off. They put together a closing drive to win it second and goal. Palmer hooking up with Andre Caldwell for the four-yard strike, and the two-point conversion is good as well. Cincinnati knocks off Pittsburgh by three. Dick and Dan. So in the north of the AFC, Baltimore 3-0, Cincinnati 2-1, Pittsburgh 1-2, and, and Cleveland 0-3. And, and let me say it for you. Oh, my. <laughs> That's right. The Bengals 
But you know Carson Palmer's healthy and with their wide receivers and his time to throw that's the type of effort you're going to get. He is the strength of that team. And Cedric Benson running well out of the backfield too. You think the Steelers missed Troy Polamalu at all. Oh boy. Ronnie Brown with that reception and out of bounds at the 10 yard line stops the clock with 24 seconds to go. So in the AFC unbeaten after three games Denver's three and oh Baltimore three and oh. Indianapolis plays tonight 2 and 0 and the Jets 3 and 0. Those are the unbeaten teams. And Cincinnati could be should be 2 and 0 or 3 and 0 because they lost remember to Denver on the last play of the game. Oh, freak play. On that freak tip pass to Brandon Stokely. Point well taken. Yeah, the Bengals actually could be 3 and 0. So some surprises, disappointments as well as Morano's team hoping to Break out of the 0-2. We'll go home 0 and 3. Patrick Cobbs now gets the handoff from Henny, and that will all but uh, end the game. It doesn't appear Miami wants to run another play. So the Chargers and Phil Rivers with a victory today move to two and one. And Chad Pennington, let's hope that uh, injury to the shoulder is not serious. One of the finer gentlemen in the league. Final score: 23-13, San Diego. Tonight on CBS at 60 Minutes, followed by the season premiere of The Amazing Race and Cold Case. For Dan Fouts, this is Dick Enberg. We bid you goodbye from San Diego, California. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 44. CBS Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.